behind me, bro. Sorry, kids. <clears throat> You're just going to have to hold I off know. for a little bit. Hold it. Mom's fault. It is. So oh, this, yeah. is a, this is my prime example of, honey, I think I want a beta. And he says, really? And I says, yeah. I said, well, we should try to breed them. So instead of a beta, I get a whole beta quarter with 35 tanks. In the early mornings, they, they are so bright. Uh, it's so vivid, you wouldn't even think it's the same fish. And they're the uh, Melanotania parva. Again, another Gary Lang. What is up everyone? My name is Michael Pohl with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to be going on a fish room tour of someone that I met through the Sacramento Aquarium Society, my local fish club, and they do breeding out of their home. They've got 80 something tanks out of their little home and it's really cool because as soon as you walk up to their front yard, you can see the tanks in the hallway and through the windows and all that and it's a really, really cool place to hang out. Now I do want to thank Larry, Mary, and their son. Um, they let me hang out with them pretty much the whole day. I got there around noon. I didn't leave until eight, nine o'clock. Um, and that was kind of more of me going like, okay, I have to actually go home because I have work in the morning type of deal. But we had some awesome people stop by and visit and chat. I got an awesome tour. We had some awesome food and we talked a lot of fish pretty much all Sunday. So it was an awesome way to spend a Sunday, especially the day after an aquarium club. It was fish all weekend and I had a great time. Now one quick thing, this is my first ever fish room tour and this is their first ever fish room tour. So we were both kind of new at this, both kind of learning a couple things. Um, I switched camera setups about a third of the way through. I brought three or four different setups because I wasn't sure what exactly I wanted to use. Um, so I moved some microphones and, and rearranged things. Um, the next time there's going to be some slight differences now that I've gotten it in the editing and I've seen what it does. Um, so I know there's some errors and some parts where it's kind of not super interesting because um, of the camera work. but. I'm aware of that, that'll all get fixed the next time. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the video because it is a long one, but it's a really cool one. They've got some awesome beta racks and some Gary Lang rainbow strands and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'll go ahead and let them talk about it. And so now we're gonna go ahead and roll the video. Hi, I'm Larry Shankle and this is my wife, Mary Shankle. And we're Central Valley Aquarium. And this is our mascot, Peanut. She wants to be a fish when she grows up. So we good. started this as a, as a hobby and it kind of escalated and every time I said I needed a new fish, I got a new fish and a new tank. And uh, just recently my husband added Angel Island, which you'll see later, because I decided to get into angels and uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's been fun. It's been a fun road. <laughs> I've actually been in an aquarium trade since the 80s. I had a fish store called Something Fishy. I uh, closed that down, then uh, became a breeder and then got out of it for quite a while and then decided yeah time to get back into it. Start with this tank? Sure yeah it's a mess. Uh, it, it's the uh, 120. L quick little story we managed to get this one um, and the wife found it. Some guy up uh, uh, out of Auburn said come take it it's free. So we grabbed it I tore the glass apart resealed it and, and built the top and the very bottom base and said uh, here we go. Yeah. This is my angel show tank. When we first started in fish, we were doing um, Africans, and every time I went to the store, I would point to an angel, and I'd say, honey, can I have this one? And he says, no, the Africans will eat it. So finally, I got my angel tank, and I'm really proud of it, and we've had uh, several batches of the babies. Those are my babies. And our first batch of babies were um, hatched on when we found out that our granddaughter was going to be a little girl on July 11th and that was our first angel babies. We were really excited. Awesome. And that's uh, Cherry Island. Uh, cherry shrimp. shrimp Row. I'm sorry because they're cherries. Uh, we started out with about six or eight of them and it took about two or three months we kept going hmm, how come we're not getting anything? One of our buddies is saying, well, just give them some time. Yeah, in time, we've already sold now, oh, probably four or 500 of them, and they just keep going. They'll never stop. We started with the uh, cherry shrimp, actually a variety of shrimp, because I wanted to take them to my classroom, special day class teacher, for my students. And the uh, red one that was called Redness by one of my students 
died and she was devastated. She made a little uh, grave and a tombstone and put it outside by the garbage can at work and she was devastated. So I said, honey, we have got to make these fish live so that I can take them back to school. And then so she got another one, we brought it home and it had babies, at least we told her it had babies and she was very happy. <laughs> So from there, we've also got uh, down here the, some thread pins uh, we've gotten off of, um, oh, I forget the name, Aqua. Aquavid, yeah. Those are the parents. We have a couple of other tanks. We've got their kids and then uh, their grandkids. And they even have some kids running around in there. Then we've got albino plecos, long fin. And there's some baby rainbows in there running around. They managed to take a ride on a plant or that piece of wood. And this is our blue shrimp up here. And those are just blue shrimp there. We started with a couple of those and they ended up it's finally starting to breed as recently, really. And then of course some tang and yakins. Um, waiting for them to do some, some spawning. Had them for uh, just a few months. Months. Hi, I'm John. I'm the son of Larry and Mary. Um, I started eating into fish tanks of dragon more or less by then too. Uh, so we managed to get this small tank, and I like building stuff. So I decided to make a custom base and top. Um, I designed the. Um, doors with this process uh, where we take um, a, a transformer from a microwave and run electricity current through a um, electrolyte pro uh, process and create these unique designs on the doors to bring in some detail and everything is custom made by hand by myself. <laughs> And the tank has now um, got different quarries in it that like to spawn every time uh, Larry gives them a water change. So when we want eggs, they get changed. And we have a couple of sets of eggs that were just laid this morning. And we have a couple other variety of uh, fish in there, some glass, and a lot of hair algae. <laughs> <laughs> never get away from the hair algae. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, worried about removing that because I don't want to disturb them too oh, much. Oh, I know. Exactly. And they like it. Yeah. I'm going to tell them what's in here. The other uh, three tanks over there, uh, they're just part of the, the fish, uh, I guess you could say collection. Uh, we have about 86 tanks running right now. And, um, and those are just fry in the top and the middle tank. The bottom tank is just holding a, um, a fish that I might be worried about, so I have them separated. A little quarantine tank. <laughs> they don't know which side to go on. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> they never do. These are our turquoise, um, some of our larger ones, and then uh, a little more junior. We have some other ones. 50-gallon, uh, 55-gallon. And we just threw some other mops in there to just uh, let them play on. They always get excited and light up. Those are our teenager um, turquoise and our preteens down below. And when the preteens started having babies, we had to put mom and dad in there and say, Oh, really now? You're a little young. And in my spare time, of course, I'm making mops for them to breed on. And they are color specific. <laughs> they do like different colors. It always seems no matter how many we, get, we sell off, it, it doesn't affect. <laughs> it doesn't affect the tank. And we have the empty tank up top. That's got a quarry in there and a couple little shrimp and snails. Um, basically, it's for growing out angels. Um, now it's going to end up being free because we built Angel Island. Uh, and that'll be in the fish room. Uh, we do have a few store bought ones. This is the Macaulay. Uh, at least what they call it. I think it's got a little bit of a mud in it. But they sure like to throw some eggs. We have some praycocks here from, that we bought 
as eggs from Gary Lang. And these are F3s from Pagai. We do have uh, babies from it. Actually, we have about two batches, I think, two large batches. I'm sure if I pulled them off, there would be a bunch of eggs on there. And we brought the, uh, bought the eggs in uh, November. November. So we're uh, just getting babies and such from them, so it's just great. Mm -hmm. And these are going to be just baby, baby grow out tanks. Um, a, lot of these, a lot of the tanks will look empty, but if you get up close, then you end up seeing something moving around in there. I love that blue tape. <laughs> it works for everything. More Bosmani. So here's some of our uh, other Precox babies. Uh, they're the F4s. And then we have, um, I guess they're getting big enough now that over time to sell. They're scared they turn off their colors. And a darker background and gravel yeah. will also bring out colors in them. But being grow out tanks and breeding is not too worried. These guys are, they're turned off. <clears throat> they will usually turn off usually around, I'd say 10 o'clock in the early morning. So they are so bright, uh, it's so vivid, you wouldn't even think it's the same fish. And they're the uh, Melanotania parva. Again, another Gary Lang. And the same thing with these, but they don't turn off as bad. They're the Tripassiata from uh, Papin Creek. And they're, they're actually a little overly friendly at times too. Open a lid to feed them and they like to nibble at your fingers as they're chomping down the food. And no we fun. kept the uh, labels that we first got from them, which tells all the information with the Gary Lang's name on it and the F whatever they were at at the time. And the fish room? Sure. And the fish room. Fish room time. Okay, so we have more babies here. They're, well, they're juniors. Those are uh, the Chilotherina Passiata. We have two good sized tanks and you'll see a couple little quarry cats running around. We have the albinos, the, the uh, Aeneas. Um, that was from the eggs in the other room. And we have more of the Precox. These were, these are not the pure strain through Gary Lang. So I need to get rid of these and then this tank just becomes the, uh, uh, another grow out for more Precox of a pure strain. Some of the tanks don't have lights. Got some bristle roses in here? Oh yes, we got some bris bristles in there. Uh, I keep forgetting to give them a razor so they, those bristles get bigger and bigger. And they will not have babies for us. <laughs> not Pretty yet. soon they're gonna get in a timeout. <laughs> yeah, we have a few different bristles. Um, the short fin and long fin. Uh, we have a calico also. This one, the lights aren't working, but those are uh, Bosmani. Some uh, the nice. younger, younger ones. Pickles. Pickles. Sure, I guess starting at that top left, that's a, that's a Percatus. And also the, the fork tail. I like to call them pom-poms, pom-pom swimmers. And then there's the Gertrude A spotted blue eye. We've had a few babies and sold them off. The black shrimp tank sold off most all of those. We need to get another batch. I don't know if you'll end up seeing any in there or not. Pretty low on them. And there mainly it's for the, the clown pleco. Uh, we've got one rainbow shiner in there. 
should end up getting, I, I think we ordered yeah, we six of them. Today. Yeah, six will be coming in today. Um, the Glossolepis Dordii, those are Gary Lang strain that we'd gotten from a uh, president uh, of our aquarium club, Rich Byerly. They've been mm. shy, but they're starting to learn to come out. It's about time they start giving me some eggs. <laughs> And then we got some assorted guppies and endlers in there. Mostly we're raising up the guppies and endlers for um, our granddaughter. She has a tank and so we're getting her set up on uh, just, you know, one of each pretty. She's uh, nine months old, so it's, she loves it. Yeah, and there's a killifish, garden rye, it's the gold. Got those last night at the club, the club meeting. He's a beauty. And that one, of course, when they say the least killifish, they mean it. That's the least of the killifish. <laughs> <laughs> Not really pretty. But boy, oh boy, do they, they pump out some babies. Yeah, and we keep the quarry, a little quarry here and there in, in the tank, so keep the bottoms cleaned up. Baby Tripassiata Blythe River. And those are in F4. Blair Eye, uh, that one. Um, again, another Gary Lang. Same with the uh, Tripassiata. Uh, those, uh, again, known as the party animal. Once they get older, we've got the parents hidden over here, too. The uh, Corydoris Adolfoi. And there's a couple of assassin oh, snails in there. Ones in the corner. And we've got a few little babies of them that we can show you. And another Blythe River Tripassiata. Warm babies. And then we got the back of the Sudamugal babies, the Gertrudes and Yeah, that's the, uh, there is a couple of them up in there. Anybody babies in yeah. there? Yeah. Those are little guys. Yeah. What's in the stuff here? Um, actually, I don't know if there's anything left in that tank. No, we moved them to the junior tank. That's just tank. a, yeah. More cherry shrimp. Our backup plan in case the first one doesn't work. <laughs> Something happens. And that's the junior thread pins there. And the parents were the ones that you saw in the uh, front room. And so those are all babies that were born here. And they're super friendly too. The ones in the front room seem to be a little more skittish. I think it's just the movement that goes around in there. Right in mm -hmm. here, it's, they're crazy. Matter of fact, let me just pull that mop real quick and see if we have any eggs. Need to get to a little bit of light. Now oh, there's just a few in there. Yeah. Okay, kids, give me some more. So when it gets fairly full of eggs, we'll take the mops out. We'll leave the parents in, and we'll take the mops out and put it in a separate tank so that they don't get eaten. Occasionally, when we don't, or we'll leave them up in too long. The babies either get eaten or they manage to hide in the plants and we say, oh, guess what? There was a mop in there that needed to be pulled and now we have babies in the adult thing, which sometimes live. So, but mm -hmm. we usually move them up. I have an egg I'm rolling around on my fingers. I gotta keep my fingers out of other tanks now. <laughs> so, in here we have Celebes Rainbow. Uh, there's one in there, there's a couple little, I call them rodents running around on the bottom. Uh, we were going to end up looking for some good ones. Um, nah, I think we're going to give up out of that one, open the tank back up so we can raise some other babies. And that's the Amari. I'm really looking forward to getting some eggs out of uh, those guys. They should be producing already. I think what's happening is that they decided to 
Nope, not going to give them to you on the mop. You're just going to have to start pulling plants, I'll bet. And beautiful little fish. And they were another Gary Lang also uh, that I'd gotten through Rich Barley. Uh, these are the Trifasciata Blythe River parents. Um, they normally are colored up a little bit more. I think they... Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah, he's showing. He's doing good. A ton of them. Oh, the, the wife's angels. Yeah, those are the platinum angels. They got moved because they started eating their babies. They took really good care of the eggs and then they had a couple of hatch and they says they start eating, so they're in timeout. They're definitely not in good standing at the moment, even though they're trying to be friendly. I didn't mean it, really, Mom? I want to go back over to Angel <laughs> Island. And that's a tank that we, we've been starting to use for uh, hatching the eggs. We move the slate over and do it by hand as long as we can catch it in time. And usually there's only just a couple left in there. There's actually a few in there uh, swimming around. They're very, very small. They're really small. Actually, I see one sitting uh, about an inch, inch and a half in, straight in. And then behind the bubbles also. And there's a little guy there. I think there's three. And those oh, are uh, from right my um, F1 angels. Oh, yes, Tarzan and Jane. Beard. Yes, Tarzan and Jane. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> another Sudamuel, the Luminatus Pasci. It's funny, I, one person on uh, one of the forums was saying, yeah, I'm looking for the blue eyes. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't know how new they were, and I wanted to be helpful. And I said, but you, you, there is the blue eye, but there's also others that have blue eyes. And someone came back and said, well, you mean the, the Gertrude A? I said, well, yeah. Uh, and then there's the Pasci, and, and most of the uh, Pseudomoogles will have uh, blue eyes. And he says, oh, you have a picture? I was thinking that he's thinking, prove it. <laughs> so, of course, I had to get the picture. <laughs> so I sent that up, and he's, oh, thank you. And that was about it. <laughs> there's another set of Gary Lang's. Uh, these are the Bowmanai, not to be confused with the Bosmanai. Uh, again, thank you, Gary Lang. It was awesome when he came to the uh, club and did a speech back in November. And then um, the white pecos. There's some pads. butterfly pecos in there that hopefully my butterfly pecos will start having eggs soon. There's about six of them in there now, and they're really pretty. And we made a special food for them with uh, all kinds of different things in it that they absolutely love. So they, they get a special blend. And so far, it's not working with babies yet. So they're going to go on timeout too. What's the mistake down below? Um, really, it's, it's misfits. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's actually a couple of them that I think they jumped out of the tank from above down below. So, Oh, I think it was about a year and a half ago we had, uh, in the main tank, it was an African tank, Lake Malawi, and one of our buddies decided he wanted to get into them, and we wanted to get into uh, the rainbows, so we gave him all of the ones that we had, and then he collected others. Uh, then he decided he wanted to go to rainbows, and so now we have a whole bunch of them left. Well, this one was in the group. And of course, I saw her mouth ex or throat extended, and I'm, uh oh, got to move her. Yeah, she's got babies. And they're about two weeks old. Yeah. Then, more of the Precox babies. Uh, those are the Gary Lang F4s. Running around there, they're always screaming for food. And this is where we put the mops pretty much so that they can hatch and won't be disturbed. When we start feeding, you know, we call it Gerber, when we don't even see them yet, just in case they hatch while we're not looking. And those are the Bowman Eye, which are the ones at the end. And these are, they're almost teenagers now. They're growing up. And those are going to be little tiny dots. They'll be hard to see, usually from the surface, and they 
you may have run to the back, but they're Blair Eyes, one of those party animals. And Herbert, uh, Herbert Axel that's the Gary, Gary Allen strain. And matter of fact, their parents are uh, going at it at the moment. <laughs> they always are. Uh, there's the little babies in there. Those are the Parvas. Parva. Yeah. More Parva baby. And they're little dots also. They're and, but they're about young. two weeks old already and there's still little dots there. Oh, so yeah. small. The smallest babies that we get are the Threadfin. Oh yeah. And they're just tiny, tiny. Some These little guys, they are always colored up and always hungry and always in the mop. Yeah, I bet we're getting about 300 eggs as we speak. They are just crazy. Still love these little fish. Oh, mm -hmm. well, they, they like to chase the little females in, and you know, and, and then they go and follow, and that's how they breed. The female will go in, lay the eggs, and the male comes behind her and fertilizes them. And, of course, if we ever get into who's your daddy, we're in trouble. <laughs> These guys are really shy. They will not color up when anybody's looking. They're not that colorful as it is, but somebody's looking at them, yeah, no, not happening. So in our group, uh, some people were talking about them and they said that uh, they're more like a mood ring. Exactly. So they will get some color, just not a whole lot of color, but they're more of a. Um, These guys back here, you can a little bit more see uncommon. A little bit of color. Yeah, they're so shy. A little more uncommon. Uh, again, another uh, strain from Gary Lang. These are the Blair eyes. Uh, he calls them the power party animals, and they uh, they really get colored up. I'm waiting for them to start pulling out their their drinks and see how much of a party animal they really are. And she's gonna go, she's grabbing some food real quick. Um, so in here, these are basically just grow out. We've got a little bit of a mix going on in there. Those monis and there's some turquoise. There's probably about a good I'd say probably 200 all together in there. And they're spoiled rotten. And she'll be back with it. Oh, here she comes. Anybody hungry? Anybody hungry? Ready? Come on. Come get it. Come they're probably going to be shy now. Of course they are. Yep, Hi, they're very shy. Hi, babies. All right, let's take it to the other side of the world. Mm. Across the Great Divide. You guys aren't going to be yeah, really now. They're all camera shy. Really now. But of course, once you take your hand out, they're mm. all going to swarm. Oh, of course. Oh, there they go. And we have some turquoise in with the Bozeman ice. <laughs> How did that happen, kids? <laughs> huh? But occasionally we'll put a mop in the wrong spot and then we find out. <laughs> Oops. Oh, yeah. Couldn't resist the food, huh? You might want to check to make sure you still have fingers left after that. Oh, yeah. Probably not. They taste good, too. All right, kids. Here you go. All of these tanks here are all babies. So this is a the second to newest rack we built, which was um, basically just as a grow out for the rainbows. We decided to do matten filters in the corners. Um, they're not in the bottom two, they're in the, the top two and the middle two. Why did you decide to do matten filters? Um, it was funny because somebody, we'd gotten these tanks from Rich Byerly and somebody already had uh, some pieces in the corner but they had removed them. And I thought, you know what, that's, the, the, I think, gonna be the best thing to do. So I went on ahead and just got some foam from Home Depot 
and I just cut it up on the bandsaw and silicone them together. And the corner pieces that are holding it in, um, they're the uh, countertop uh, pieces and cuts in the saw are perfect. So I just silicone those on. It fit perfectly and I love it. I can't even seem to harm the, the system. The, the top tank goes to the middle down to the bottom then pump right back up again and then with the uh, water changing I had hardly have to do a thing keep the plants in there water stays nice and clear um, never a spike it's just been a, a fantastic setup you still more babies over here yeah oh, yes. they're all babies Those are Parva out there. And there was, okay, so there was another little mix up there too. Of course, people are gonna laugh at me for that. Um, so what happened was the store-bought McCulloch's that are out there were in a one tank. And when we had uh, purchased the eggs at the um, auction, the um, Parva we did not get a buddy of ours did, and then he moved and he needed a place for them and asked us if we would hold them. And I said, sure, but we're gonna end up with babies. And he said, oh, I don't care, that's fine. Well, we just moved them in with the par or with the uh, McCulloch eyes. Next thing you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of um, eggs going on. So, okay, I just need to get rid of all that. So that's growing out from there. <laughs> Got them separated now. More and babies, the, and then the bottom tank is just some kitties, and those are all homegrown. Yeah, a little and those are from the parents that was in the uh, bar. Yeah, you'll find those kitties in so many tanks. They're scurrying around over here in the middle on the bottom too. And the regular Aeneas, and there's a couple of albinos. Those are, that tank is so funny because I can, I can actually put a piece of food on the, on, at the surface in the morning and some of them will actually come and eat out of my hand. And you'll see them up there in the top. And they just love to play in that current. That's their racetrack. Nice track. little baby in there and we need to call out. Yeah. So oh, this yeah. is a, this is my prime example of, honey. I think I want a beta, and he says really, and I says yeah. I said well, we should try to breed them. So instead of a beta, I get a whole beta corner with 35 tanks. So like I say, you know, be careful what you wish for. But these are my new babies, and I named them all, of course. And we've had some babies, and they're all different kinds and. Hi guys, I told you I had to say hi today, remember? Even the Corydoras sadophoi are mm. in one of those tubs. Marlin's uh, blowing bubbles. Yeah, do you need a little bubble nest? Is Dory coming over? You need more bubbles first. Good boy, good boy. So how does this whole system work? Well, the yeah. bottom tank is basically acts like a sump. And then uh, there's a sponge filter and then one other pump. Uh, that'll pump the water up on the right hand side through the half inch PVC. Um, you can kind of see on the top up there how it comes through. We found those valves on uh, eBay, I believe it was. Uh, they're fairly cheap and they're plastic. They seem to be working pretty good. The black line is uh, the drip irrigation. Uh, rain drip, rain bird, one of the two. I always get those confused. So these are just Tupperware containers? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they're dollar actually dollar store, store yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dollar Tree. And I drilled the holes and... Uh, we went everywhere searching for something, but yeah, you drilled the holes and... Put the PVC put in the pipe valves. in. And then mm -hmm. ran it into rain gutter and then capped those off, silicone them and on the one end. Um, drilled a hole for one inch line so it'll drain back down to the tank. Then I, I did run also an airline so that we also need... Uh, to do some bubbles. So we've got these that needed the air here, which are, they've got the little air, and there's about 10 babies in here, the Adolphi. 
and these there's three babies here and mommy is uh, black beauty and dad is midnight and there's three little babies in there and when they get a little bit big for there then i have a 10 gallon here where all their parents names are up there so i know what babies they are new year's here at the bottom hey guys wake up dinner time yeah yeah they know <laughs> sure yeah, <laughs> and uh, so you mentioned the uh, the sponge for the overflow there yeah okay so I I kept scratching my head over what am I going to do to to keep things from going through so what I figured out was I'm using a hole saw I forget, forget the exact size uh, without the drill bit and I have two pieces of wood and I'll squish the foam down with clamps and then use the hole saw and just go straight down through. It, it literally is so fast, so easy. Um, and I could pop out probably 10 of them within a minute. It, it's just so quick. I, you could just hold the, the board down if you're really careful and just bring the handle down and cut out these things. It was really neat. It really worked out well. So you just push them in and it fills up to the edges and does great easy to clean and then this as it doubles as you're washing out their little tank you can take this out and use it as a sponge and wash the tank without having to put anything else in there to you know mess up or has any other residue of somebody else so they work as a great cleaner too Larry said I didn't think about that so yeah me neither <laughs> but look it works We're fun having babies. We have it yellowed because we're actually using some alder cones um, and uh, some of the Indian almond leaves. So we, that way we help keep the eggs going good. Get the fungus off. And we're... This, yeah. this is finally Angel Island. I need a sign. We haven't made it yet. Um, we're, we do the microworms for all the little babies. And so... We keep starting new cultures just so we don't lose them all. Yeah, so this tank actually has two different catfish in there. There's the um, orange laser quarry, wild caught, and then uh, uh, the other Aspidorus. And of course the other one I can't pronounce. Uh, they're actually kind of hiding in there. wonder if... Um, yeah. find one yeah there's uh, about six of them usually oh, they no. usually they hide either in that corner or they hide into the the moss Let's see. hey guys mm. hey guys can we scare you out yeah you probably have to move the whole moss Let's see. can't reach down that far <laughs> no they want to hide yeah, and as hiders. soon as I get enough angel babies, these everybody who is in Angel Island will be evicted. Yes. Don't get too comfortable. And down here are some of the uh, Africans that we got back that we didn't intend on. Was your flashlight over there? Flashlight? I'm sorry? Do you have a flashlight over there to shine in here? Yeah, these are the ones we were, I was talking about that we actually had in a tank gave way to a buddy and then he back. decided he wanted to go to rainbows and gave them back so we're working on rehoming them because they're too pretty just to sell to nobody so we're looking to rehome and the tank's too small for this many yeah they're pretty And this is my first pair of angels. This is SPED, um, SPED a acronym for special education. And because of the way her tail is and things like that, yeah, that's how she got her name. And this is Brianna, don't judge. I know he's a boy, but we picked him up the day that uh, my, our granddaughter, Shiloh Brianna was, uh, we determined what sex she was. So I named them that and anyway, so he is a boy, but he's keeping his Brianna name. Yes, he's very proud of it, aren't you, baby? And uh, these here 
uh, were the platinum ones that got evicted, and that's their eggs, but I'm not they sure they're going to do so much. Yeah, We've they, got a couple of wigglers, actually. You see one right there at the top, two yeah. right there, that are going to live. Oh, I see. Yeah. We'll need to clean off the rest. I thought I'd given up hope on them. Yeah, never give up. And these are my wild cot, and they're um, F1s. And she's the F1, he's actually F0. Yeah, he's F0, she's F1. Tarzan and Jane, you know, figure the forest. And these are my little leopards, and they had a rough start. And now they are, yeah, I know, Mommy has no food for you. And they're all different colors, but they're all leopards. So can't wait for them to grow up and get, and get us the babies. And these are uh, some blue angels that I got last night, so I haven't figured out what they're going to actually look like, but they're, they're supposed to be a blue uh, pearl scale. So. And, and this is, there's a baby betta in here, I don't know how he got there, um, and there's one angel in here, and I do know how that got there, but yeah, I don't know where the baby is. Oh, I'll bet you I can find him. Yeah. And actually, he... He likes you better. He managed to fly him. over here. Oh, he's right up here at the top. Let me see if I can get him to come down. Come on, baby. And he's and, uh, our oldest baby. That baby. I believe it. It looks like a split tail. How can you tell? <laughs> it really has a split tail already. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So that's our oldest baby. Of the bettas anyway, so that's real cool. And this is a... Wild cut kind of tells all about that. And they've had babies too, and hopefully that's the ones that are going to be the and ones over there. The last three, and of course it's the other end where the other baby bed is are, it's going to be another rack like this one uh, on this other end. But these three, I've got the top empty, been kind of using that for water change. Uh, water change, yeah. That way I know I've got good water. And then the middle tank, of course, is for um, uh, jewels. And they've which, already gotten their eviction notice. Yes, they have. The bottom Those angels have got to go in there too. Yeah, the bottom tank is going to end up being a, hold a holding tank for uh, uh, 30 neons that are coming in today. So it's going to be the little holder, and after that, they're going to be the dither fish for some of the rainbows. And that will work out good. That's kind of generous, right? And it's it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, you know, I come home from a long day of dealing with students and parents, and and I mean, you know, he kind of likes me to come say hi to him first, but the fish room's closer to the door, and sometimes I don't quite make it to him, and <laughs> he'll find me in here. How long have you been home? Oops, sorry, honey. Um, they called me first, so yeah, I, we love it, and it's really relaxing. I recommend. Recommend fish for anxiety relief any day. <laughs> I, I'm just having too much fun looking at these herberts. I mean, we're standing right here and they're just not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a couple of guppies in there. I That's noticed that they stand there on end. <laughs> our token guppy, you gotta have one or two, you know. These guys go every single day. <laughs> I, be, I bet I could almost pull them up from any of the parents in, that we have right now and be loaded with eggs. Yeah, pull them up and show them the best. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I can reach it. Yeah, <coughs> bro. Sorry, kids. <clears throat> You're just going to have to hold oh, off for a little bit. Hold it. Mom's fault. It is. It's always mom's fault, unless it's dad's. Mom, you stopped us right in the middle. Make sure you didn't get a fish in there. <laughs> Eggs all over the place. And snail. Snail can go bye bye. So all the eggs in the little clear kind of circle thing is there, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone. They're just they have tons. been busy babies. Yeah, I'll go rinse my hands real quick and then um, we'll try another mop yet. Okay, kids, you can go back to having fun. No, I can, try right back. I can do a mop fun. Oh, good. Which one? 
Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, maybe that or that or. All right. Let's see. But you guys, huh? Did you lay eggs for us? Let's see. What did you do? What did you do? Daddy says you did it. Let's see. And if you uh, wring it out carefully, you don't hurt the eggs at all. Oh yeah, look at all them. Oh, those are eggs. So yeah, if, if we could end up with uh, maybe a thousand fish tanks, I bet we could fill them. Yeah, look at that. They have a busy, just busy loaded. day. loaded. Yeah, we need to find you a tank. Uh -huh. We need to find a new baby tank for you. So now we'll put some babies together, but you gotta judge the ages. We don't want, you know, these to hatch and be, um, you know, small enough that the bigger kids can eat them. So you have to kind of be oh, careful. They're right back at it too. Yeah, you, you, was you know, a, it was only a, a fast pause. 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 Yep. <laughs> well, you told us, Dad. You told us you wanted us to have babies. So we used to take a mop and we would uh, dry it out and we'd make sure it was clean and we'd put it to the side and then we would use it for another tank. Well, we kept trying to figure out how come this fish doesn't look like this fish? Well, what we figured out finally is even though the mop had dried and the egg was on it for maybe two, three weeks, it was still viable. We would put it in and let new parents take the mop over and we would get different babies. So now to make sure we don't have any crosses, I mean, the baby are still pure because they were in a pure tank, but they're swimming around with, you know, somebody else. So now we boil them all, dry them really well so we don't have anybody escaping. But it's been fun. All right, so I just want to say thanks for coming out or for letting me come out to the fishing. Uh, anything else you want to say to anyone? Uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed. And um, thank you for coming out. Yes, really appreciate thank you. it. This is exciting, definitely exciting. It's our first time, so if we look silly. We meant it. <laughs> yeah. We did it on purpose. Next time we will yeah. look silly again. So if you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you guys. Like I said, I had an awesome time hanging out with Larry and his wife and his family. And I really, they, they were super nice, super, super nice. I'm hoping to do more fish room tours like this in the future. I've been talking to a couple of people about going and touring their fish rooms and fish stores and stuff like that. So we should be getting some more of these. I'm finally getting to the point where I can get out a little more and uh, do some of these things. And I'm really, really enjoying it so far. So if you're new here and you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please consider it. I really do appreciate it. Hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching. Watching, and I'll see you guys next time.